A farmer is going to divide her 50 acre farm between two crops. Seed for crop A costs $10 per acre. Seed for crop B costs $20 per acre. The farmer can spend at most $700 on seed. If crop B brings in a profit of $150 per acre, and crop A brings in a profit of $140 per acre, how many acres of each crop should the farmer plant to maximize her profit? We'll be solving this problem using linear programming, so the first step will define our variables, which represent the unknowns. The unknowns are how many acres the farmer should plant of crop A and how many acres of crop B. So to keep this organized, let's let lowercase a represent the number of acres of crop A and we'll let lowercase b represent the number of acres of crop B. So here are our two variables. Now our goal here is to maximize the profit and notice how crop B gives $150 of profit per acre and crop A gives $140 per acre, which means our profit equation, which is also called the objective function, would be P equals 140 times A plus 150 times B. So we want to maximize this profit, but we must do so given the constraints in this first section. So now we'll list our constraints, which will be a system of inequalities. This first sentence tells us the farmer is going to divide her 50 acre farm between the two crops, which means A plus B, the total number of acres, must be less than or equal to 50. So that's our first constraint, which we see here. Next, there's a cost constraint. Crop A costs $10 per acre, crop B costs $20 per acre, and the farmer only has $700 to spend. So our second constraint is going to be 10 times A plus 20 times B must be less than or equal to 700. So this should be 700. Now there are two more constraints. The number of acres of crop A and the number of acres of crop B can't be negative, which means A must be greater than or equal to zero and B must be greater than or equal to zero. Now that we have all of our constraints, our next step is going to be to find the solution to this system of inequalities, which is called the feasible region. Once we find the feasible regions, we'll find the vertices or corners of that region. We'll sub those points into our profit function to determine the maximum profit under these constraints. So again, our next step is going to be to find the solution to these four inequalities. Let's go and start on the bottom and work our way up. And just to keep things organized, the x-axis is now going to be the a-axis, and the y-axis is now going to be the b-axis. So we first want to graph b is greater than or equal to zero. To do that, we'll first graph b equals zero, which would be a horizontal line passing through the b-axis at zero, which is actually the a-axis here. And our inequality is b is greater than or equal to zero, so we would shade above this line. To negate the shading though, I'm just going to use arrows in this direction. Using arrows instead of shading might make it easier to interpret the region, which is our solution, which would be the region shaded four times because we have four inequalities. Next we want to graph a is greater than or equal to zero. So we'll first graph the line a equals zero, which would be a vertical line passing through zero on the a-axis, which is actually the b-axis here. And our inequality is a is greater than or equal to zero, so we'd shade to the right. Notice so far the double shaded region is this first quadrant. Also notice all the inequalities do include equals, and therefore each line is going to be solid. Our next inequality is 10a plus 20b is less than or equal to 700, so we want to graph the line 10a 
plus 20B equals 700. Let's go ahead and graph this by determining the intercepts. So we'll make a table of values. To find the B intercept, we'll set A equal to zero. To find the A intercept, we'll set B equal to zero. So notice when A is zero, we have the equation 20B equals 700, dividing both sides by 20. We have B equals 35. So the B intercept is the point zero comma 35. And now to find the A intercept, we'll set B equal to zero. So if B is equal to zero, we have the equation 10A equals 700, dividing both sides by 10. We have A equals 70. So the A intercept is the point 70 comma zero. So let's go ahead and graph these two points. 70 comma zero would be here, right on the edge, and zero comma 35 would be here. So now we'll graph a solid line passing through these two points, which would look like this. Now to determine which side of the line to shade, we'll pick a test point. Let's go ahead and select the origin with coordinates zero comma zero. So using this test point zero comma zero, we'll substitute zero for A and B in the original inequality. So we'd have 10 times zero plus 20 times zero, which is zero, and then less than or equal to 700, which is true. So our test point is here below the line, and the result was a true inequality, which means we shade the side we're on, so we're going to shade below this line or in this direction here. Notice how the triple shaded region now is this triangular region. We have one more inequality to graph. We want to graph the inequality A plus B is less than or equal to 50. So we'll first graph the line A plus B equals 50. And now we'll make a table of values to find the intercepts. So we'll set A equal to zero and then B equal to zero. We'll notice how when A is zero, B equals 50. And when B equals zero, A is 50. So the B intercept is positive 50 here. The A intercept is positive 50 here. Again, we'll graph a solid line through these two points, which would look like this. Now we'll determine which side to shade. So again, we'll go ahead and use a test point. The test point could be any point not on the line. Let's go ahead and select the origin again. So when both A and B are zero, this would give us the inequality zero is less than or equal to 50, which is true. The test point is below the line, and because it's true, we shade the side we're on, so we shade below the black line. So our solution is the region that's shaded four times. Notice how our solution borders along the B axis here, the A axis here, then here along the black line. Notice how this region here is not below the black line. And then it borders along the red line here. Notice how this region here is not below the red line. So this region here is our feasible region. So our next step is going to be to find the coordinates of the vertices of the corners and then sub those values into our profit function to determine the maximum profit given these constraints. Before we do this though, let's use a graph that I created using some software so it'll be a little bit easier to read. Most of these points are pretty easy to find. Here we have the origin with coordinates zero comma zero. Here we have the y-intercept of our line 10a plus 20b equals 700, which has coordinates zero comma 35. Let's come back to this point here. This intercept is the a-intercept of a plus b equals 50, which has coordinates 50 comma zero. And finally, this point here is the intersection of these two lines, which we can tell from our graph, has coordinates 30 comma 20. But sometimes, depending on the graph, we may not be able to determine this point graphically, so let's also find this algebraically. 
Again, because this point is the intersection point of these two lines, we can find this point by setting up a system of equations. We would have to solve the system a plus b equals 50 and 10a plus 20b equals 700. Now we can solve this using elimination or substitution. Let's go ahead and solve this first equation for a. So if we subtract b on both sides, notice how a is equal to 50 minus b. And now I'll perform substitution into equation two. So we'd have 10 times not a, but 50 minus b plus 20b equals 700. Now we'll distribute, so we'd have 500 minus 10b plus 20b equals 700. We subtract 500 on both sides, we'd have 200 on the right. Combining like terms, we have 10b dividing by 10. We have b equals 20. And notice if b equals 20, a is equal to 50 minus 20, or 30. So a would be 30. Notice how our point of intersection is the point 30 comma 20. And now the last part is to find the maximum profit, which will occur at one of these vertices and one of these corners. So now we'll take these four points and substitute the values of a and b into our profit function. And to save some time, I've already done most of that work. Again, here are the four vertices. So p of zero comma zero is the value of p when a equals zero and b equals zero, which of course is zero. p of fifty comma zero is the value of p when a equals fifty and b equals zero, which notice is seven thousand. p of zero comma thirty-five is the value of p when a equals zero and b equals thirty-five, which is 5,250, and finally, p of 30 comma 20 is the value of p when a equals 30 and b equals 20, which notice how it results in the largest profit of 7,200. So we just found the maximum profit under the given constraints, which is $7,200, and this occurs when a equals 30 and b equals 20. So let's go ahead and summarize this. The maximum profit is $7,200 at the point 30 comma 20, or when the farmer plants 30 acres of crop A and 20 acres of crop B. So this is kind of a long process, but I hope you found this helpful.